Hello and welcome to the second channel for Tales from the Trip. I'm your host, Trip Keeper, and on today's video, we're going to be looking at this Reddit thread called What's Undoubtedly the Scariest Drug in Existence? This was in an Ask Reddit, and uh, we're going to read some of the responses. There's 2.3 thousand comments, so we're not going to read every single comment, of course. But we're going to read the good ones, uh, the top ones, of course, uh, sort by best, um, sort by top. Oh, nope. We want to sort by best, actually. I shouldn't have pressed that. Son of a bitch. Because I had them all. I went all the way down. But, uh, yeah. No, so... This can be a very fun video to do. Learn about it. Uh, we already know what's probably the scariest one. And we already looked at that. Uh, we, we know Detura is definitely the scariest drug. Uh, it, in my opinion, I think Detura... I don't know. Detura, salvia at a very, like, a high dose of salvia can be very disturbing if like you know you're gonna be like trapped somewhere for years uh, maybe you're in a good spot i don't know maybe you're like had a good life and then coming back to this life is what makes it bad like you, you just like live a different whole whole different life as a person just in a different family you know you have a family and uh yeah or you could be like a doorknob for 35 million years you know you never know so salvia detura dph i think detura just the fact that detura is just so wild in the stories i've read i think detura is the scariest drug in existence uh to me uh, but i do think you know drugs like fentanyl you know xylazine trank metatomidine those will kill you for sure those will physically alter you uh, but detura is more of a mentally altering drug uh so yeah let's let's read these um should i just read in my deep voice the whole time because that might be better to do, you know, reading like this and maybe, maybe even a little bit deeper. Okay, so um, I can read a little bit deep, but I can't, you know, keep it up a little bit because, uh, you know, when I read, it just goes and goes and goes. So, uh, so yeah, this person, under, uh, no underscore reporter underscore 7148 asks this question, ask Reddit, what's undoubtedly the scariest drug in existence? Undoubtedly, excuse me. Uh, this first one. My brother did Angel's Trumpets Detura twice. He was completely off in his own world both times. I think it permanently altered his personality because he was never the same afterwards and is now just a complete clusterfuck. Yeah, very terrifying. ER slash ICU doctor here. It's absolutely mind blowing that Angel's Trumpet slash Detura slash 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 Nightshade are considered recreational drugs by anyone at all. They act on muscarinic acetylcholine system in your body. The drug class is called anticholinergics. Yes, Detura is anticholinergic. It's a whole different beast than any other systems, any of the other systems in your body, like the opioid slash endorphin system, stimulant slash catecholamine system, think cocaine and meth, or hallucinogen slash serotonin system, think LSD and shrooms. So this guy is an ER doctor, but he can't even spell serotonin right. Uh, S e r a t o n i n. That's how he spelled it, but it's S e r o t o n i n. Uh, so yeah, make sure you get that right. I see that as a misspelling a lot. You know, so, yeah. Um, but anyways, the muscarinic acetylcholine system, let's see how he pronounced that. He spelled that right. I know that for a fact. Muscarinic pronunciation. Muscarinic. Muscarinic. Okay, so muscarinic. Anyways, that's pretty close enough. Uh, the muscarinic acetylcholine system in the body uh, is the body-wide network of nerves which control your basic physiology and body functions. It's known as the parasympathetic nervous system. This is a symptom which directly controls your heart rate, your blood pressure, and the, and the gating and modulation of your entire brain's response to sensory inputs and overall stimulation levels. I don't think this guy is dumb, by the way. I just think it was, uh, it was just funny that he spelled this. Like, he's saying all this stuff, and it's, like, clearly smart, but then he couldn't spell serotonin right. I thought that was funny. It's the system that controls if you sweat or shiver it controls fear and panic responses 
Most drugs have some degree of safety because deranging a single level high single high level system still has multiple fail safes in place to keep your body and physiology physiology functioning normally. The muscarinic slash acetylcholine system is one of those fundamental networks that keeps your body operational. Messing with it is insanely dangerous because you are fundamentally manipulating the way your brain and body function with no safeguards to prevent you from running into traffic or just having your heart brady down and stop. Someone said, so it's like messing with the admin, seti admin settings. Risky. A little bit. <sighs> A little bit. Um... That was quite chilling to read. Someone said, okay. Um, oh God, I have medical conditions that fuck with my parasympathetic and slash auto, auto, autonomic functions. And I can't imagine messing with that one on purpose. My life is hell because of it. These are functions that you really take for granted until they go haywire. And from that point on, it's just a long journey of realizing more and more things that your body can't modulate anymore. Until these things get fucked up, you can't comprehend how integral and plentiful these functions are. I'm not even 30 yet, but my body feels like it's falling apart on the inside. And I've spent years with countless specialists and piles of money trying to make it not as severe, to, to very little avail. Seeing this description, I would say that Angel's Trumpet slash Datura sounds absolutely terrifying and definitely a top contender for this prompt. I wouldn't wish this shit on anyone. Yeah, Datura is definitely the top contender. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's just, it's insane what Datura is. I know someone who did this once and now believes he is being monitored by Japanese satellites. Oh God, sorry I laughed. That was a little bit funny, but uh, no, it's a little scary. It's uh, definitely more than a little scary. It's a lot of scary. It definitely breaks your brain. It's, I'm not going to lie. Your brother's consciousness is probably altered for life. Yeah. My friend took it 10 years at middle school and almost died. I think it may have affected his brain chemistry permanently because he used to be this gifted smart kid and now he's completely out of it all the time. I can't even hang out with him anymore. He's incoherent. What would a single situation like that, where he almost died and was completely unconscious, do to him? Uh, someone said, lack of oxygen to the brain could do this if they passed out or circulation was bad. Yeah, I had an epileptic seizure on a plane this year and wasn't breathing for like 10 minutes. Doctor on board said I would have died if he wasn't there. My cognitive functioning since then has been notably worse. Yeah, luckily that doctor was there, dude. That would have been bad. Datura is the only drug I've consistently heard you'll never be the same person after trying it from other drug people. Yeah, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same once you take it. Like, it's, it just doesn't sound fun. Like, I don't know why people take it in the first place. Like, it just doesn't seem like something that you should do, you know? But, I digress. I digress. Um... I did Angel's Trumpet a few times in my late teens. I am 40 now. I've done about everything, and it's the only one that truly scares me. I've seen it permanently and dramatically alter personalities, too. Yeah. I find it crazy that people want to use Detura as a recreational drug. I read about Detura when I was a kid, and it scared the crap out of me. Detura was the first thing that came to my mind, but I wasn't going to answer that because I legit thought nobody would actually use it recreationally. Um, well... Welcome to the internet, dude. I think a lot of people know what Datura is now. Uh, I think a lot of, for my trip reports, people know about it. Uh, so yeah, uh, people are learning about it. And then, you know, Shrouded Hand started off with it as well, like his Datura trip reports. But, you know, yeah. Uh, this stuff was planted by my town and was growing all over because the flowers were pretty because the flowers were pretty me and my stupid ass friends 20 years ago decided to eat a bunch of the seeds we all ended up blacked out and in the hospital I guess I fought two security car security guards plus a cop and put up a good enough fight where they had to restrain me, on, me restrain me to the bed came back to consciousness getting catheter pulled out and was hallucinating as if I was dreaming while awake I saw a school bus drive through a hospital lobby and they even decided to give me a psych eval evaluation when I was still under the effects which obviously resulted in me being crazy. It wasn't fun. Admittedly that psych evaluation probably helped you from uh, helped probably helped you help save you from jail time, excuse me. Um yeah, no. So this this goes towards uh a fucking reddit thread that i think nexpo did a video on it where he disappeared um let me see here oh where is it at
Yeah, so this is from seven years ago, flip and flop, I think. Uh, yeah, so it says, finally got my hands on some Detura. How much should I take? Hi, guys. I finally got some Detura to try out. I'm free tomorrow and I have the house to myself, so I'm really excited to try the effects of this interesting plant. I have around 60 seeds, some dried flowers and leaves. How much should I take for a nice first time trip? I was thinking of crushing up X seeds and making tea with them. Drink the tea and smoke a couple of leaves while the tea is starting to take effect. Would 15 seeds be enough? Source on the, sources on the internet tell me a regular dose is around 10 to 20, but I've, I've seen some talk about 30 plus seeds. Think guys. Thanks guys. Edit. Slowly drank the tea in a half an hour. Didn't taste too bad. Not feeling much yet. I'll check back with you guys in an hour or so. Uh, exactly zero. Someone said. Uh, yeah, so this guy disappeared. He, uh... <laughs> Someone said four hours ago. Have fun with the shadow people. Let's hope he has the day after tomorrow as well. And the day after that too, probably. And then someone said he's had four years off. If he's still alive and well now. Can't wait for this kid to update in like three days. Here we are three days later. Here we are five days later. Here we are seven days later. Eight days, 13 days, 17 days. He dead, guys. Still hasn't updated. Oh no. <laughs> 21 days and nothing. Throw that fucking hell in the garbage. Account is a day old TBH, guys. I'm gonna call now. It's a prank, bro. He's just making up properly. You're right. He posted in r slash gaming a couple hours ago. Edit quite incoherently enough. Well, I guess he, we'll all hopefully find out what happened in three days or so. Um... So yeah, we don't know if it's real or not, but, um, you know, they, they made a video on it. Expo made a video on it. So, you know, he doesn't, you know, when we make videos, we don't try to put misinformation out there. You know, we're not trying to make fake stories or something. We're just trying to put what's real, what's real, you know, what we think is interesting. That's all. That's all we're fucking doing. Um, all right, just smoked a cigarette and refilled my drink. So we got it going on here now. Uh, someone else said Datura. Datura, I had a friend use it and he ended up thinking he was Super Mario in a video game that was going to get cancelled, killing him. He was hospitalized for a couple days in a psych ward. He was doing crazy shit like trying to wall jump and thinking about how he lost his powers and was on his last life. I don't think he ever fully recovered. He was always different after that. I've known him for 25 years. I think he may be mildly schizophrenic. Mildly way to put it that way i don't think it's mildly i think it's more majorly um just uh, there's other things wrong with them too when the wikipedia page for a plant includes the symptoms mnemonic blind as a bat mad as a hatter red as a beet hot as a hair dry as a bone the bowel and bladder lose their tone and the heart runs alone and then you know you're dealing with some spooky shit I was given PCP and told it was synthetic marijuana. When the hallucinations hit, the thing I remember most is that I was dying. I was being buried alive first. I was lowered into my grave by an 8-bit eight, eight Mario and Luigi. Well, that's kind of... It's kind of cool to think about that, but it's also very terrifying because you were lowered in your grave. Like, if you weren't lowered in your grave, like, that's scary. Being buried alive is a terrifying way to go. Like, would you guys say that? Put the put in the comment section would you rather have radioactive poisoning or uh or um being buried alive what would be a worse death to you uh if i had to choose the scariest thing someone's someone would sneakily slip me it would probably have to be angel's trumpet this feels like uh i'm in the restricted section reading about uh horcruxes i've never once heard of this drug before and it sounds absolutely terrifying yeah no it's uh it's terrifying bro it's it's fucking terrifying um, my my dad tried to stab his mom after he had someone he was younger. That's scary. Shit can happen though. Shit can happen, man. It's it's terrifying to think about that shit. Uh, Delirians, detura, scopolamine, DPH, etc. They're absolutely nightmare drugs. They're absolute nightmare drugs. Crazy, crazy, hellish hallucinations. Trees leaking blood. Glass spiders crawling out of your friend's eyes. A room full of shadow creatures. That sort of thing. And no fun high to speak of. Plus, they can cause permanent brain damage. They're also very addictive for some reason, despite breaking a lot of rules on what makes something addictive. And scientists aren't quite sure why. Even hardcore drugs, even hardcore drug users, stay away from them. Well, DPH, people get addicted to DPH because it f makes them feel something. You know, people want to feel something no matter if it's scary or not. That's why people get addicted to DPH. That's that's my whole humble opinion on that shit. Um, 
I was sober for three and a half years and relapsed on DPH. Got denied entry to the military over a literal dot tattooed on my hand as a freckle. What? That's stupid. A year or two before they made certain size tattoos okay. Started off started off ta as taking Unison to fall asleep because I was sad and didn't want to think and didn't want to think anymore and turned into going to Walmart to steal bottles of generic sleep aids. I'd eat a handful a few times a day while drinking cases of Monster to stay awake. Went through a couple of hundred count bottles a week. Truly the most addictive substance I've ever taken. I don't remember much from that six to nine month period. I know after a few weeks, maybe the scary part stopped and it was just a downer. No emotion. I was delirious, but not in a hallucinate spider's way anymore. Um... Uh, where are we? Stay far, far away from DPH. I can't even take Benadryl anymore out of fear of getting hooked again. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you don't want to do that shit. Ooh, my primary care physician doctor will be a woman tomorrow, thank God. I do not want to meet with a man. For some reason, like, I don't... How do you guys feel about talking with men with your problems? Like, I don't feel... I don't feel right. Maybe if you're a woman... But not if you're a man. I, I don't like that at all. I, I just can't. I just can't do it. I really can't. Um, uh, let me turn on airplane mode again. Uh, I usually don't like to tell people, but F it. I tried to myself on DPH. So you guys know what that means. I'm not going to say it because I don't know how, you know, YouTube works. You know, I mean, I know how YouTube works. That's why I'm not going to say it, but I used to use it recreationally. So I knew it was pretty messed up medicine. One time I had a whole, whole conversation with my sister who was standing, only looked down from my bunk and see she was actually asleep, but she was also standing in front of me. Oh my God. That's kind of terrifying to think about. You look at your, your sister and she's like standing in front of you, but she's also sleeping. Like, just imagine that dude. That's terrifying. I won't say the amount I took here, but I did die at one point. Okay. I was brought back, thankfully. Hallucinated for days, parentheses, weeks, in the psych ward after. I would become lucid, but slip back into delirium over and over again. It's weird. I remember it uh, I remember it so vividly. It was like delirium and an out-of-body experience at the same time. I watched myself do crazy shit and watched myself die and then would slip in and out of hell in the psych ward. I watched myself attack the staff and rip IVs out of my arm, but I couldn't control myself. I almost had a bladder rupture. I almost had my bladder rupture because, fun fact, you can't pee on high doses. No, you can't. I wandered the streets for two days when they released me. My feet were covered in blisters. I knew my name and what year it was, so that was good enough to let me go, I guess. The doctor said it would take a year for my brain to heal. A year. Damn. It took more like two. Holy shit. And I don't think it's all the way right anymore. I'm going to end up with dementia. I can feel it. Sometimes I wake up and still see spiders. It's been a decade since then, by the way. I've done therapy and IOP and I'm more stable now, but I'll never be normal. If it wasn't for my kid's severe allergies, I wouldn't keep it in my house at all. He's only had to use it once and I cried after giving it to him. That shit should be illegal. Uh, you gotta think how much she did, dude. That was probably, like, a lot, a lot of DPH, dude. You had to do a couple grams, I'd say, for that to, for that shit to happen. That's insane. <sighs> Fucking wild. Um, uh, someone said, Yeah, I tried to myself with something similar back in college. Just mixed a whole bunch of shit together and hoped I'd die in my sleep. Except I woke up and there was a giant scorpion hybrid meeting nesting above my bedroom door. It had wings that would fly around the room and attack me if I tried to leave. Clouds of tiny fruit flies swarmed all around me. I was waving my arms like crazy, trying to clear them away from my mouth so I could take clear breaths. It all seemed so real. I did not doubt for a second it was happening. A giant earwig appeared on my headboard and started talking to me. He said, hey, you know this isn't real, right? And that's when I realized I was having insane hallucinations. He told me the spider scorpion was trying to protect me. It didn't want me leaving my room and making a bigger problem in public. It was as though some level of my subconscious was looking out for me, even though I had no concept of what was going on. Very fucking strange experience. Um... Holy shit, I had one or two full-on dementia spells from that shit. Actually, one time, I mixed DPH with that other sleep aid that might be might be what's in Unisom or as a Dramamine. Anyway, I was lost, about a quarter mile from work. Yeah, they say even if you have the worst time from taking that shit, it makes you want to do it again. And DPH does cause early-onset dementia, not to be fucked with at all. Yeah, no, it's uh, don't fuck with that shit. Um, it does cause early. I'd made a video on it on my main channel about how it causes early onset dementia, just dementia in general. So go watch that if you're interested. 
um, uh, I forgot what it was called, but it's like a yellow and purple thumbnail. So go watch that. Uh, Datura also lasts three fucking days. There's nothing that can prepare you for trying to have Thanksgiving dinner with a bunch of people that you feel like you should know, but when it really comes down on comes on down to it you simply don't know these people sitting in front of a plate and utensils that you're not actually sure how to use when you can't even fucking properly speak once was plenty wow when i was 16 i was living with my strange dad and my and a strange wife a bunch of irritating people were on the way over for thanksgiving and dad and i were both stressed about it i said i have some lsd in my room we should do it i was joking about doing it but not about having it to my astonishment dad who had never done lsd said okay so we did thanksgiving that year was memorable and more tolerable than it would have been without a head full of acid and my dad at the head of the table with a carving knife in his hand just staring at the turkey i have never told this story because what kind of person does lsd for thanksgiving no one that i know of until i met you um uh, well that's detura so they they said um you know acid is way different than deter i don't know why they they said that uh but yeah oh well, it's a good story regardless Detura is scary. Swim tried some angel trumpets and ended up completely in their own head. Snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. And they're standing inside someone's open garage while the homeowner is questioning them. Made up some bullshit about looking for a lost dog and booked it to their buddy's house. Get there and try to act normal. Buddy is watching workaholics and keeps asking if everything is alright. Snap back to reality again. There goes gravity. And Swim is in the fucking woods and it's night. They break down crying because they think they're losing their mind. Then they're suddenly back at their buddy's house watching workaholics, but your buddy is concerned because you just try to take a drink from your phone. Yeah, taking a drink from your phone is not a good sign, you know. Oh, there's Ozzy. Hi, Ozzy. What are you doing? Oinky. He's sniffing something. Oh, well. Uh... We're not going to read that. Um, let's see here. Scopolamine, nicknamed Devil's Breath, is the South American mind-altering drug considered the scariest drug in the world by many. I would toss crocodile in the category of very scary drugs. It's semi-synthetic morphine that causes necrosis at the injection site. I do not recommend searching for images. Neither do I, but they're very, they're very, they're interesting to look at for sure, knowing how they are. Oh, oinky. You want to say something? Eh. Yeah. Crystal meth absolutely destroyed my brother's life. That could be a title for my video. <laughs> it's a long, sad tale, but he started in his early 20s, and the truth is from that time, it's just been a long, painful downward spiral. It's like he had a genetic affinity for it, and the truth is that he was ruined the very first time he tried it. When he finally got off of it for a while in his 40s, he was pretty much brain damaged, couldn't really function properly. Today, he's one of those zombies you see out in the street somewhere. Don't do crystal meth, kids. Please, just don't. Someone said, I'm really sorry for your loss. Yeah. I am sorry for your loss too, man. It fucking sucks, dude. Someone does meth and you're just, your life is over after that point. Your life is just fucking just gone. It's, it's so gone that you don't even know anymore. Um, let's see. Alpha PVP, or as you know it in the States, Flocka. It's meth with 10 times the addictive potential and 20 times the stimulative rush. I have seen people turn into demons in less than a month on the stuff. Experiencing it firsthand was the only time I contemplated suicide on a come down. It is that bad. All of that coupled with something like 0.50 C per 100 gram production cost in the right lab is terrifying. Uh, point, okay, 50 cents per, okay, so I was like, I was reading that wrong. 50 cents per 100 gram production cost in the lab is terrifying. So yeah, 50 cents per 100 grams, I don't know. That's, yeah, that's nothing. So you can produce like, uh, damn, you produce a lot. You can produce a lot for that shit. It's a horrible epidemic over here in Russia. It's not just about the addiction, but the potential for violence. Fent and methadone will kill you. PVP will eventually kill you, but you'll, but while you get there, a lot of innocent people are going to suffer. That's true. Alpha PVP is nothing to be messed around with. I did a video on Flaka the other day, or a couple weeks ago. It was a very good video. 
You guys should check it out. You guys should check it out. I don't know why you're not checking it out. Go check it out right now. Flaca is very popular here in South Africa. No doubt contributing to our already high violent crime rate. People really do seem people really do seem to turn into demons. Yeah, South Africa has a lot of crime. That's sad because South Africa could be a nice city, but or a nice country, but um yeah. I don't know. I am an ICU nurse, used to work in South Florida, and remember three to four years ago when Flacco was becoming more common. Patients would come into the ER hyperthermic and severely agitated. Typically, they would just be sedated, intubated, and restrained for at least 24 hours before we attempted to wean sedation and attempt to extubate them. I just remember that these that those patients would be insanely strong, requ requiring four of us to retain them so they don't hurt themselves. Now I, now I work on the West Coast and nobody's ever even heard of Flacco. Well, that's good. Let's keep that shit away. Trank. That shit looks diabolical and terrifying, and I can't fathom how that was ever put into rotation. Neither can I. Like, I don't even know. Like, wh how does he even get into the fucking drug supply? That's what I would like to know. Same with this metatomidine, this new drug that's coming into the supply. Like, you'll hear about it pretty soon, uh, but it's coming on. Uh, NBC just did a news story on it, thank God. So, yeah, hopefully it's getting covered, and it can be more people can know about it, but... It's a terrifying thing, man, out there. It's a terrifying thing. Trank dope is xyl i.e. xylazine. A horse tranquilizer contains no opiates at all. I know a small group of people who are unknowingly getting it in New Orleans for six for five to six years now. It's only been in the news for maybe a year, and their skin has been utterly destroyed by the severe abscesses. It literally eats away your skin, and because it's an animal tranqu tranquilizer, it it just knocks you out and makes you super groggy. We also have no idea how to detox people from it comfortably. It's an insanely cheap for dealers and importing, and it's only going to get worse from here. Absolutely heartbreaking what it does to people's bodies, and on top of all that, it doesn't respond to Narcan or any MAT. If there was ever a time to push harm reduction for opiate addicts at the highest level, like full throttle giving people safe opiates to consume, it's right now. That's true. They need to get, we need to talk about it right now. It's a very serious drug. Very serious, guys. Very serious. Um, they said crocodile. Uh, I've seen some fucked up shit on the internet in my day, but in the top few, most fucked up is probably seeing some people who have rotting legs, full on bones sticking out, still alive, and shooting up with crocodile. It's almost as if, it's almost as if someone it's almost as if it somehow keeps them from dying while being a living corpse slash zombie. It's beyond comprehension. The guy having his foot sawn off was the limit for me. Below the knee, there was just zero flesh, but bones leading down to his rotting foot in a bag. Oh God, where the fuck is that video at? The doctor that checked, he couldn't feel anything by tapping the bone, uh, then just sawed the foot off. It landed in a bin. Where the fuck do I watch this video? I, I kind of want to see it. Uh, <laughs> I want to see it. There's some replies to it. I, um... Yeah, so do you have the link? I know this video. Where's the link at? How do you not die from not eating and stuff? Uh, so there's no video. They said, oh, man. Uh, yeah. If you guys want to look it up and find it, you're... It, all, by all means, go look it up, but I can't find it. Um, maybe. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I kind of want to find it. Guy having his foot sawn off on crocodile. Um, I don't know. Let's see here. It's on YouTube. Ah, oh, it's been removed. Darn it. Someone said, I am a physician. That is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. I've seen some bad shit. Uh, maybe it's in um, the Wayback Machine. 
We're gonna find this. Or right, I'll pause it so you don't have to continue listening to me ramble. All right, so it can be found. I'm not gonna tell you where to get it because I, <laughs> uh, it wasn't that bad. Uh, I don't know, maybe you guys would think it's bad. Um, but for me personally, I don't, it's, it was bad. All right, I would say it's bad, but it wasn't like to the point where I was just like, oh, no, 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 no. you know, it wasn't, I wasn't sickening. Like I've seen worse than that, but it was still bad. Uh, basically chops off. Uh, he can't feel a thing and it's just his bone that's down there. It's nothing but bone. And he chopped, they, the doctor ch uses like a wire to chop off with the bone. So if you can watch that, go right ahead, just search up, um, guy having his foot sewn off on crocodile reddit and then go to videos and you'll see it it's right there at the top one it's eight minutes and 12 seconds long but yeah no that was crazy it was a crazy video i will say but nothing that i haven't seen before <laughs> um yeah there's zero flesh like i can't like i don't know i feel more grossed out seeing like kevin Ware's basketball injury where he just his bone popped out of his leg when he uh the college basketball player like over 10 years ago uh when he was in the ncaa tournament that shit freaked me out more than this like it really wasn't that bad it really wasn't like it's bad but it's not that but for me it wasn't that bad um yeah no um so yeah it was available on there and uh yeah Crocodile and Shrank are honestly scarier than fentanyl to me. Well, they should be because they're <laughs> there's a lot more stuff in there that you shouldn't be taking. Uh, yeah, the necrosis of the skin is the worst part for sure, uh, or just necrosis. I guess necrosis skin is your coming your skin is coming off anyway. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see here. There are many. But the easiest one to acquire is fentanyl. PCP is up there too, but for an entirely different reason. I was a paramedic for 32 years and have seen some crazy shit, but nothing like the absolute quick death devastation fentanyl has caused. Fentanyl or meth, in my opinion. Dad is a meth addict, and to say watch him go through it all, all as hell would be an understatement. When all you ever wanted was love, and all you were given was abandonment issues and self-doubt, you blame yourself. You let him blame you. Let him punch holes in doors and walls when you beg him to just watch a movie with you. Go for a drive. Draw with you. Let him call you an ungrateful bitch when you tell him through tears and shaky hands that you just want to spend some time with him. Then he gaslights you. You question it all. You grow up with no self-worth. He goes from manic, infatuated with himself, to downright nasty and abusive to super 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 and self-loathing and then he's up again and is all right in the world and all is right in the world and you sp you see a spark of the dad you remember from early childhood then having to accept as a healing adult that it was the meth then too and you never really knew your dad all you knew was the addict but it's your fault you don't have a relationship because you chose yourself if he ods he tells you it's because you cut him out if he dies you tell him you have to live with the guilt he disowns you then he says he didn't he never said it in fact you just never wanted to be his daughter meth stole my childhood i've never even done it meth killed my father and he's still walking around still breathing i have a more healthy i have a more than healthy fear of most drugs but meth is the scariest in my opinion it's the only drug that will kill you and leave your heart still beating well that's one way to put it damn sorry for her dude that's very sad for me def oh for me definitely the devil's breath scopolamine from my very limited understanding it could turn a person into a quasi zombie like you're easily influenced by the suggestion of others but still able to walk kind of talk and perform certain task tasks but you're just not there anymore remember nothing a stranger could just blow in your face in a passing and poof you're just not there anymore and your actions become not of your own that's some horrifying terrifying shit yeah it is everyone's seen that vice documentary right I mean, I think everyone's seen it. Um, Detura. My friend decided to take some for his 30th birthday at a barbecue. Halfway through, he believed he was in another dimension, and the neighbor's kids were sent to destroy him. Whilst trying to get away, he thought everyone was out to get him, and he wanted to protect himself any way possible. Whilst trying to swim on the grass, he... <laughs> where he believed he was in the sea and diving down to avoid trees or rolling into a ball to protect what he thought he's what he thought his organs were falling out and needed to push his brain back inside and plug his ears with the grass this went on and off for a few days was never the same since 10 years later still forgets things and asks if it's real his pt has ptsd from it it's a drug to not fuck about with a next level hallucinogenic 
I've taken other drugs, but you sort of know what you are seeing. What you are seeing are hallucinations, not deter. You actually believe what you are seeing slash feeling as your body is believing it and reacting to the senses. If you think cutting off your ears will stop your fall, stop your brain falling out, so you don't die, type of shit. Uh, a lot of a lot of stuff miswritten there. Maybe he was on deter. Uh, but yeah, um, so fuck that. I'm gonna go smoke another cigarette. All right, if you guys are wondering why I'm smoking a cigarette is because I'm just very stressed out. Um, I just needed something to take the edge off. Like, literally, I know it's a fucking, like, cliche thing to do, like, take the edge off with a cigarette, but, like, it's it's what I need. Um, I'm not I'm not addicted or nothing. I'm not, I'm not gonna continue this after I smoke this pack. It's just something I need a temporary fix, you know? So don't worry about me. I'm not gonna be doing it. It's just that's just what is gonna go on right now you know um but yeah uh let's continue ed doc here crocodile and meth are all terrifying but your average punter typically won't encounter encounter them the scariest drugs are the ones you can buy in a supermarket the scariest paracetamol it's it's danger lies in how benign people assume it is it's actually surprisingly easy at either accidentally or not to od on some of the sickest patients of my career have been on have been paracetamol ODs, including one I missed. A particularly traumatic example is a young woman who'd accidentally taken a few too many paracetamol over the course of a couple days for a neck injury she'd sustained, she sustained during a minor car crash a few days before. She was yellow, delirious, had no blood pressure, and had such deranged blood clotting, a common complication of paracetamol toxicity, that all the IVs were placed it kept failing because her system was full of clots. She ended up losing a few fingers in one hand because her radial artery clotted off after we placed an IV in it and her hand became is iscamic iscamic the there's a very effective antidote but its efficacy wears off as the hours pass and if you miss the boat liver failure kidney failure encephalopathy death yeah no liver failure is definitely a scary thing to think about with the with paracetamol um yeah you don't want to be doing that shit Trank or Flocka. Trank causes necrosis and Flocka, Flocka causes erratic behavior. Combine the two and you become a real zombie. Yeah, no, combining the two. Oh, God. Can you imagine doing both at once? That's not something I want to imagine, actually. Don't imagine it, guys. Don't imagine it. Um. Oh, shit. Uh, let's see here. Oxycodone as a construction contractor, I've witnessed firsthand how employees with legit injuries involving chronic pain have spiraled into severe addictions. Uh, on my own attempting to help my addicted employees, I've put a dozen such team members through rehabilitation. Not all have fared well, only eight were well enough, well enough to return to work. For me, it's a drug called Cyphril. I was It was prescribed to help manage symptoms of my Parkinson's disease. A side effect list on the information sheet warrants it could, could cause severe impulsive behavior. It turned me into a full-on hopeless pokies addict. I put more than 10,000 of my borrowed money through the pokies in the space of several weeks. I became so desperate, I planned my sua sua sua. Just before I was due to carry it out, I contacted my neurologist who recognized the cause immediately and within 24 hours of seizing to to take the medication, the, the drive to gamble, to take the medication, the drive to gamble had completely disappeared. Since that time, I've developed nor enormous respect for people trying to deal with or overcome addictions who, unlike myself, can't stop by simply stopping taking the drug. Uh, unfortunately, the government is as addicted to the pokies as I was, so we aren't likely to see the end of pokies anytime soon. It was by far the worst experience of my life, and it took the couple of years on disability pension to pay back what I borrowed. Uh, I was taking Citrol to overcome dizziness, falling over, and severe headaches. The symptoms returned when I stopped taking Cyphril. Uh, Cyphril, Citrol, they said Citrol and Cyphril, but I can live with that. I couldn't live with the addiction. Uh, so yeah, let's search up what Cyphril is. Uh, okay, so Pram Pramipexol, Mirapex ER, Mirapex. It's a dopamine promoter. Okay, it could treat Parkinson's disease and restless leg syndrome. All right. So that's the scariest one, um, bad person. 
Um, meth. I'm seeing a lot of comments about delirium, and they are for sure absolutely terrifying. Meth, though. The addiction changes you in ways you never thought possible. The addiction happens so fast, and it ruins your life in a split second. When you'll do anything to get high, you'll do anything to get high. I'm 10 years clean, and I can't even rectify the memories I have of what I did with who I am now. The anxiety that left me with is debilitating. Uh, yeah, meth is very terrifying. I don't know why. It should be listed more on here, but, um, yeah. What the hell is this? Excuse me. I don't know what that is. Fuck it. Opiates. It's only because I've, if only because I personally lost family to them. The weaker ones, the weaker ones usually get, the weaker ones get users hooked. Then they find the stronger stuff, and the links addicts will go just to get a fix are frightening. Yeah, it really is terrifying what they will go through to get a fix, for sure. Alcohol. Never has a substance caused more deaths, violence, trauma, and pain through centuries and in every part of the world. Yes. I'm going to say alcohol, not because the effects are scarier than the other drugs mentioned here, but because of the public perception. Alcohol is a drug capable of extreme physical and social harm, but it isn't even considered a drug by the majority of the population. It is not. It is not at all. Uh, that's the problem with it. This is why it's the scariest for me, because it's so accepted, so normal to consume alcohol and even be considered an alcoholic. Yeah, no, like, if you're considered an alcoholic, you're still, like, considered a living person. But, like, you know, if you're a junkie, addict, like, that that's when they cross the line, you know. That's when it crosses the line for it. Uh, let's see here. Alcohol, 100%, a life ruiner. In moderation, it's fine, but it could turn people into horrible individuals. We sometimes forget it's a drug and a depressant. If I couldn't drink, I would. There lies the problem. Yeah, no, there lies the fucking problem. Uh, let's see here. Um, alcohol again. So many deaths, yet it's still perhaps the most common drug to alter the mind and proud sponsors of your favorite game ball sport. Yeah, no, it, it really is. Like, it's it's very scary. Uh, people are bringing up some really great points in the legal, illegal market, but there's one specific pharma offering that I think is utterly terrifying. Tramadol. Mainly because its effects are similar to combining opioid pain blunting effects with a seemingly mild SSRI loading effect. Tramadol takes the worst aspects of opioid withdrawal and, due to the way it works on your neurotransmitters for serotonin, combines it with the worst aspects of going cold off of SSRIs. So if you have to take it due to recovery from some trauma and you're on it for more than a few days, that's what you have to look forward to. I have personal experience with this and I will never, ever touch this stuff again. And it's not like I was deep in being a pillhead. I simply took a half tap for three days straight in the evening to get sleep. Feeling that I didn't need any more on day four, I stopped. Day five through nine was utter hell. I really cannot explain to you how simultaneously depressed and utterly demolished energy-wise I was. It was hell. Cigarettes. Quite simply because it seems so comparatively benign and ubiquitously easy to, uh, to get when addicted, and it's far more subtle, yet kills many times more than other drug com drugs combined year by year. Even when you know you should quit, there's always tomorrow. Someone said Jankum. I don't think so. Uh, thalidomide, yeah. No, thalidomide was a definitely a dangerous drug. Uh, yeah. Um, <sighs> doop a da boop, doop a da boop, doop a da boop, a da boop, a da boop, a da boop, a da boop. All right, so a couple more, I guess, and then we'll end it. I know there's probably scarier drugs out there, but I'm going to say meth and heroin. My brother was a prescription drug addict for a while, but he got into harder stuff in his 30s. My dad really messed all of his kids up, beating his opinions in us that nothing was ever wrong and you don't need help. I was lucky enough to move away from our father in my early teens, but my brother didn't, and he suffered for it. He had a lot of undiagnosed mental health disorders, and he treated his symptoms with drugs and alcohol. He was ashamed to get the help and support he needed, and after a while, the drugs got too much, and he took his own life a few years ago. Oh, that's sad. I'm sorry to hear that. Um... Alcohol, it's legal and pushed into the masses. Death, addiction, family, life, daily daily life, work habits, fetal alcohol syndrome. Alcoholism has genetic qualities as well, so it becomes generational. Yeah, no, it's scary what alcohol can do to you, man. It becomes really scary. Um, but why is it genetic, though? You know, why is it genetic predispositions? Like, fuck. 
Um, well, if you're, let's say you're you're a kid and you're you're and you see your parents drink, like that's is that gonna make you want to drink too? Like I don't know. I really don't know. Um, so yeah, I think that'll be it for today's video. I think we covered a lot of shit. I think this is gonna be a good one. But uh, if what lists down and below in the comment section what your scariest drug is in existence is probably detura if not you know meth is definitely a scary one inhalants are definitely scary for me uh but yeah alcohol shit like that that's terrifying as well uh so yeah i hope you all have a wonderful day and stay safe out there